Hi everyone, it's Catherine, and I just want to bless you in the name of the Lord. Now you're thinking, isn't that nice? It's a nice Christian thing to say, but there is power in the blessing of the Lord. There is a song right now that's hitting all the Christian airwaves. It's been sung by a lot of churches, and it's sung with a whole lot of tears. As worship leaders know that if people receive the song as a blessing from the Lord and not just as a nice little song that they're singing, that if people receive what they are imparting, that they will receive that strength, the encouragement, the hope, and the guidance that those people that they're singing to desperately need right now. You see, blessings hold a significant place in the life of a Christian. And I'm not talking about financial blessings. I'm not talking about the blessings of even having family and that kind of stuff. I'm talking about a certain type of blessing here, which this song is based on. And if you want to look up the Bible verses for this song, it's in Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 to 26, I think. This type of blessing must be taken with intentionality and almost with a sense of reverence. You must intentionally receive that blessing. You need to actively take it, listen to it, and apply it to your life. Where does this concept come from? In the Old Testament, there's two examples I'm just going to touch on for not very long. The first, Isaac was at the end of his days and his sons were coming towards the realization that their dad wasn't going to be with them for a heck of a lot longer. The importance of the father's blessing back then was incredibly powerful. It still is. But back then, when a father blessed his offspring, he was speaking into their present situation. He was calling out blessings and drawing out their strengths as he was blessing them. But he was also giving them a blessing that they could take to the bank as they went on with their lives after he passed on. Jacob, one of his sons, understood the principle of the blessing so well that he actually tricked his twin into selling his birthright, meaning he would get the blessing by giving him a bowl of stew. That's the price that his older brother foolishly sold his birthright for. And at the end of Isaac's life, Jacob tricked his father into thinking that he was his older brother and received the blessing that had been initially meant for his twin. The second example is Jacob himself. By this point, as he was near the end of his life, Jacob carried that blessing on to his offspring. And you can look at that passage where Jacob blesses each of his sons, telling them who they are now, blessing them and encouraging them and reminding them of who they are. But the blessing also carried God's favor into the next phase of their life when Jacob was no longer going to be there to be their counsel and to be their comfort. He pointed them toward where that would come from. So when you listen to this song, I'm going to encourage you to listen to it now. Get past the performance, get past the editing, get past uh, everything else except for the intention of the worshipers who are singing this song to you and blessing you with the promises that God has promised to give to you today. Receive it as if God himself put his hands upon your head and blessed you with the words that are to this song. And I bless you in the name of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may his face ever be turned toward you and give you peace.